Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Victory Baptist Church this morning. Let's all get a songbook stand and turn to page 164. Page 164. Certainly glad to see each and every one of you here this morning. We welcome all of our visitors. Thank you for coming, being here today at the Victory Baptist Church. Also, we would like to welcome those that are listening by way of radio. We're certainly glad that you've tuned our way this morning. We're praying, trusting that today's service will be a help to all of us as we gather here to worship the Lord. Amen. And as we pray today, let's do pray that God will have his way in the service and the Lord's will to be done. And uh, good to see uh, Junior's uh, mom, uh, Joyce, good to see her here this morning and see his sister here and his uh, nephew and niece and good to have them with us today, amen. In the service, all of our visitors, thank you for coming. And as we pray, let's pray today, pray for this service. Let's remember those that are lost, God will deal with hearts. Also pray for Victory Christian School. Our students will be coming back in the morning, so please remember our school in prayer. And also let's remember all of our young people in our church and across our county as they all go back to school uh, within this week and starting the next week. And so let's pray for our young people that God will help them. Amen. Also let's remember our troops and our missionaries. Also continue to remember Marvin and Mary Robertson. Mary especially remember her in prayer. Uh, Kenley Edwards, Kenneth Edwards, Johnny Pendergrass, uh, Gracie Matthews, Patsy McDonald, Alridge Woodliffe, Lisa Watkins, Johnny Francis, Tiffany Bobbitt, Nancy Barker, Scott and Nina Shannon, Philip and Sarah Bass Knight, uh, Katie Hagwood, Walker Talbert, and Joan Morgan. And also continue to pray for Junior and all of his family that God will continue to comfort them and help them uh, in their lives. Amen. I know the Lord is able. And so let's continue to lift them up in prayer. Also, let's remember all those down in Louisiana that's going through that awful uh, uh, flooding and uh, 
I tell you, destruction and, and some folks, many, many people have lost everything they've ever had in their whole life. And so let's pray for all those down there in Louisiana that God will help them and the Lord will meet the need there. Amen. Also, Stephanie and Cooper Ellington, Donald Talbot, Gracie Gill, Timmy Ford, Kenneth Wilson, uh, Mary Ann Williamson, Amber Null, Ennis, Ernest Dickerson, Evelyn Chilton, Theodore and Lois Eves, Derek Francis, Tanya Pendergrass, William Cash, Judy Huck, Robin Thomas, Ellis Tuck, Lisa Adcock, Maggie Carr, and Joe Pendergrass. Also, continue to pray for Brother Charles Thompson. Miss Martin, pray for her. She was in the hospital this week. Pray that God will touch her and help her. Also, Nancy Murray, Dot Smith, Miss Franklin. Also, remember uh, Miss Franklin in prayer. She was in the hospital for the first few days of this week, had some tests run. And so pray for her that God will touch her. Amen. Also, uh, Joyce Poole, Billy Glasscock, Lois Major, uh, and Pat Matthews. All of these today we want to pray for. And let's pray for each other. Let's pray for the choir as they sing Amen. and the special singing and the word of God. Amen. As it goes forth. Let's remember Miss Hughes this morning. Amen. Pray that God will touch her. Lord will meet the need there. Amen. I'm glad God can answer prayer. Amen. Amen. He can do anything. I believe that with all my heart. And so this morning, let's just trust him. Also, let's pray this week. And of course, next Sunday, uh, we'll be having a special day with Barry Rowland and Deliverance. We want to pray much and try to get as many as we can here for next Lord's Day. And so let's pray this week that God will have his way. Amen. And so let's just trust God to meet with us this morning uh, here in the house of God. Let's bow for prayer. I'm going to ask Brother Dale if he will to lead us in prayer this morning. Let us pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, once again. For the opportunity to be in your house and worship you, Lord. Yes. Lord, we just ask that you remember all the requests that were made here today, Lord. Lord. You know the need in every family, Lord. You know the sickness, the, the lost souls, and all the needs that we have, Lord. Lord, we just ask that you be with the service today, be with the singing, the special singing, and the preaching of your word, Lord that everything that's done here today will be done to glorify you. Yes. We ask that you be with our troops and our missionaries, Lord, and just help us, lead us, guide us, let us be a light for you. Most of all, we ask you, if there be one here today, Lord, that's lost without you, today will be the day that they give their soul to you, Lord. Yes. Lord, we ask you just meet with us today, Lord. Help us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Children's Church of this town. Thank the Lord for his blessings, amen. God is certainly good to us and we're certainly grateful for all the Lord does for us, amen. Amen. I'm thankful for the love of God and what God's love does for us, amen. Everything he has done, all that he's doing even now, certainly thankful for that. Praise his name. And it is good to see all of you here in the service this morning. And uh, while our ushers are coming to receive our morning offering, I want to make mention of a few things today. I first want to read this card. It says, with thanks, it says to our family at Victory Baptist Church, we can never thank you all enough for the kindness you showed to us during the loss of Junior's dad. We greatly appreciate all of the calls, cards, gifts, and most of all, your prayers. Thank you, love, the Parnells, Junior, Brooke, Caleb, Kylie, and Kelsey. And we do appreciate the, all that uh, the church did for them and how the church blessed them and helped them, prayed for them, just continue to pray for the family, uh, that God will continue to strengthen them, amen, in the days to come. Also, this week on uh, Thursday night, uh, we'll be doing a soul winning class on Thursday night uh, at 7 o'clock. And so we want to invite everybody that will come and uh, be here. And uh, we're just going to go over some things concerning uh, leading people to the Lord. And I asked the question, if somebody came to you, they called you and said, could you please show me how to be saved? Could you confidently pray with someone and take the Bible and show them how to be saved and prove to them, according to the word of God, that they can be saved and will be saved and are saved. Amen. And so if you can't, we want to encourage you to come uh, Thursday night at 7 o'clock. And uh, we'll go over some things and uh, just be a time of instruction. Uh, I'm not planning on preaching. We just got some things we want to go over and, and give you some information. Amen. And so be here if you can, 7 o'clock. I'm looking for some things to happen in the days to come at Victory Baptist Church. Yeah. And we're going to need people that will be able to get to the altar with those that are lost and uh, show them how to be saved. Amen. And uh, some of your own family may come to you one day and say, I need you to show me how to be saved. Somebody you work with. Amen. Yeah. And we need to know. We need to be able to uh, talk to them and show them uh, according to the scriptures. Not, well, my preacher said that's not going to work. Uh, they don't, we don't need to tell them what the preacher said. We need to tell them what the word of God says. Uh, preachers come and go, but the word of God abideth forever. Say amen right there. And uh, so uh, my wife and I will be here uh, Thursday night going over some things. And so if you can come, be with us. Amen. Seven o'clock Thursday night. Won't take too long. And uh, we'll have a good time. A fellowship also. Also next Sunday, pack a few Sunday, uh, Barry Rowland and Deliverance will be here singing uh, during the morning service. And I'm certainly looking forward to them being with us. And then after the service, we'll have a meal. So uh, we need to just have everything ready to go. Praise God. I need some of y'all that knows how to cook. And about every one of you do. Say amen right there. And uh, I know some of you tell me you forgot how, but I know that ain't true. <laughs> Patsy. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but we're looking forward to a good day. And then, of course, it'll be uh, just the morning service. We'll not have an evening service next Sunday night, uh, but we'll spend a good while at church on Sunday. Amen. 
and then start praying for revival. Our revival coming up September the 12th through the 14th with Brother Leonard Fletcher. And we're looking forward to that. I've got some, uh, we've got a few posters left on the uh, singing for next Sunday morning if you want to pick up one of them. And then we have some posters back there as well for our revival services that are coming up. And all I can ask you to do is please pray uh, that God will use these services, that we might plant the seed, that we might see people saved. And that's exactly why we were doing all that we do, to try to bring people unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And so let's just believe God today for this service. Pray the Lord's will be done. And uh, just thank him for what he has done and what he's going to do. Amen. And the Lord's will be done this morning. Brother David, how about coming and praying for us this morning? Let's bow our heads. Dear Lord God, who are a heavenly Father, who has blessed us with this day, showed yes. us mercy and compassion, given us that, that house here at Victory, with a preacher that brings that true word, dear God, we do thank you for all these many daily blessings, dear God. Dear God, we pray for all the special requests, all the loss and sickness in the church, dear God, that you just touch and meet each need, dear God. You know every heart, you know our needs, our weaknesses, dear God, and we just ask that you touch us and yes. cover us in your mighty grace, dear God. Dear God, we pray for our country. America needs that touch. We need revival. We need you, dear Lord God. We need to draw nigh to thee, dear God. Dear God, we pray for our troops, our missionaries. We pray for the school here, the teachers, dear God. I pray you'll bless them with strength and wisdom in their walk with these children here at Victory Baptist School, dear God. Dear God, we just pray that you'll touch each and every heart this morning, dear God, and we thank you for that many blessings in the name of our risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. for Christy as she comes to sing for us this morning. Amen. Amen. Testify 
let this light within me cry I know my Redeemer lives Yeah, the very same God that spins things in orbit Runs to the weary gentle hands that hold me when I'm broken they've conquered death to bring me victory well I know my Redeemer lives I know my Redeemer glad I serve a risen, living Lord. Amen. Amen. I'm glad my God's not dead. Amen. He's still alive. Amen. And alive forevermore. Amen. Amen. Appreciate that song this morning. If you have your Bible today, turn with us to the book of Romans chapter number five. Romans chapter five. And I want to begin reading in verse number one. Romans chapter number five. In verse number one, I certainly appreciate our Lord and all that he has done in our lives. I believe it'll take all eternity just to realize how marvelous grace is. How amazing grace really is. That God would save the likes of us. <laughs> Now don't think too highly of yourselves. Because you just don't know where you might be today if it hadn't been for the grace of God. I know I didn't pull myself up by my own bootstraps. If it had been left up to me, I'd probably be in hell this morning. But I'm glad God came along, amen, 
And the Lord Jesus dealt with my heart and he saved me by his marvelous grace. And I'm thankful this morning for his great love. In Romans chapter number five and beginning with verse number one, the Bible says, therefore being justified by faith, we have, now notice what it says, we have, not we're going to get it down the road, but we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not waiting for peace, I have peace. If you don't have peace, you need peace. And the peace comes from knowing the Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also, not only we have peace, but also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts, by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. <laughs> for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Our Heavenly Father, we are grateful this morning for the opportunity and privilege to be in the house of God and to open the Bible and to read, Lord, the scriptures this morning. And I pray, Father, that you would bless the reading of the word to our hearing, and that God, it will get deeper than just our mind, but Lord, it will reach our heart. God, especially I pray if there's someone today that's lost. Lord, someone that doesn't have the peace of God. Someone, Lord, that does not have that hope and assurance of heaven being their home. I pray that, Lord, somehow today, the Holy Ghost of God would speak to their heart. God, that they would turn to you and realize that you are the way, the truth, and the life. God, that you are the only hope. And God, I pray you'd speak to our hearts. May we rejoice in that which we know today, that we know that we're saved. We know that our Redeemer liveth. Lord, thank you for what you've done, what you're doing, and all that you're gonna do. We'll give you praise and glory. We ask it in Jesus' name, amen. I wanna preach this morning from verse number five. For the Bible said, and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. I want to pull out a phrase here in this verse. And about the middle of this verse, I want you to see where it says, the love of God. Because the love of God. This morning I'm here because of the love of God. You're here this morning because of the love of God. This morning we're not in hell because of the love of God. This morning we're saved because of the love of God. This morning God has been merciful unto us because of the love of God. Can you imagine where we would be if it wasn't for the love of God? And this morning, I want to think about the love of God. You know, David said in Psalm 145 in verse number three, he said, great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and his greatness is unsearchable. The psalmist said that God's greatness, 
the greatness of Almighty God. There's no way that you'll ever describe, you'll never be able to understand the greatness of God. And because of that, he is to be greatly praised. Amen. But did you realize as we think about God's greatness, it is unsearchable. But can you imagine trying to find the breadth and the height and the width of the love of God? There's no way that we could ever fully comprehend in our mortal minds the love of God. Amen. Amen. I mean, here Paul even said, uh, for scarcely for a righteous man uh, will uh, someone die. But he said, yet peradventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But he said, but God, hallelujah, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And beloved, when you think about that kind of love, that love, just like his greatness, is unsearchable, amen. There is no greater love than the love of God. I know that people love each other, families love one another, and there are people that love their families and they love others so much that when things happen and bad things happen, uh, say for instance, when uh, many times we've heard when, when a home is on fire, they'll have to hold back one of their loved ones to keep them from going into the fire to try to rescue that one to keep uh, them from perishing, but yet we know that they would perish if they got in there. That's what love does. Amen. Amen. Oh, can you imagine this morning how great the love of God really is? I'm thankful for all that God has done for me. And all I can say this morning is that the only reason he has done it is because of his love. Amen. Because of his love. Our text verse tells us that the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. The word shed in that verse speaks of being poured out. And the word abroad speaks of being manifested. The love of God has been poured out. It has been manifested in our hearts. How? By the work of the Holy Ghost. Amen. The, the love of God has been made real in to our hearts. Now, I want you to think about a few things this morning as we think about how the love of God. Number one, I want to think about the confirmation of God's love. When we think about the love of God, how can we be sure that God loves us, amen? Can I say that God's love is certain? God's love is sure. His love is not without evidence or proof or confirmation. You say, well, how can I know that God loves me? I'll give you two reasons that I know this morning that you can know for sure that God loves you. First of all, it, God's love is a love that is declared, amen. I mean, listen, the very, the most famous verse probably in the Bible is John three sixteen. I don't care where you go. Many times you'll be watching a ball game, especially football, and you'll be watching them. They'll throw a placard up and somebody's got John 3, 16 wrote on it, amen. I mean, we understand the world around us. Uh, they have, sometime or another, they have found and heard uh, about John 3, 16. You say, what makes it so great? Uh, that is God declaring his love uh, uh, for all of us, amen. Uh, for God so loved the world uh, that he gave his only begotten son uh, that whosoever believeth in him uh, should not perish but have uh, everlasting life. Amen. I mean, all we can see when we hear John 3, 16 is God saying, I love you. I love you. I love you. No matter who you are, I love you. No matter where you live, I love you. No matter what you've done, I love you. Hallelujah. I'm glad this morning that God's love is confirmed. Amen. And it is declared unto the world. Amen. The world. He said, for God so loved the world. And that word removes any boundaries. Yeah. There is no boundaries to this thing. The love of God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Amen. 
Oh, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Aren't you glad, thank God, that he loves whosoever? That takes in everybody, including all of us this morning. Amen? Regardless of what we have been or who we are. It reaches to the civilized as well to the savage. It reaches to the millionaire and also to the pauper. It reaches to the strong but also to the weak. It reaches to both free and bond. Amen. It is a love that reaches behind prison bars and even into the death cell where hardened criminals await their doom. I'm glad God loved them and Jesus died for them. It reaches into the slums where men and women live in filth so vile uh, that it would nauseate even the most hardened, wicked person. Uh, but I'm glad God loved everybody. Uh, there's not a person alive breathing God's air this morning uh, that he does not love. Amen. Uh, I'm glad one day I realized he loved me. Uh, aren't you glad for the day you realized he loved you uh, and that he gave his son for you, uh, that Jesus died for you, uh, and all because of his great love, uh, you're saved. Uh, to heaven this morning, amen. Oh, listen, it's a love that has no boundaries, amen. A love that has no boundaries. I, I, I thought this was a good way to describe uh, the love of God uh, when Nansen was looking for the North Pole. Each day he would let down a, a, a plummet to measure the depth of the ocean at any given point. One day he came to a place where the water was exceptionally deep. He dropped his line, but it never hit the bottom. He gathered up all the available rope on the ship and attached it to the line, and still it didn't reach the bottom. In his report, he wrote down the exact length of the rope that was dropped, and then he added the words, deeper than that. Hallelujah. Can I say this morning, you may think you know how much the love of God can reach out, but I will say to you, it's deeper deeper than that. Amen. It's deeper than we could ever understand. The love of God is a marvelous thing. It's an amazing thing that God loved this world. Amen. But not only is it a love declared, but secondly, it is a love that is demonstrated. Amen. He said, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. If you question the love of God, all you got to do is look at Calvary. All you've got to do is look at the cross, amen. And there you will see God's love proven and demonstrated, amen. 1 John 3, 16 says, Hereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us. 1 John 4, 9, in this was manifested the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. Amen. I want to say this morning, we do not measure the love of God by how good life is or whether or not we are healthy and wealthy. Say amen right there. We measure the love of God by him giving his son that died on the cross for our sins then do we understand and see the proof and evidence of God's love if you want to know if God really loves you go to the cross amen go to the top of the cross and write the height praise God the height of God's love stoop beneath the nail pierced hands or the nail pierced feet of the Lord Jesus Christ and you can write the depths of of his love, amen. Then walk around to the left of the cross, the side where the heart of God is. And there you can say, I praise God. You can see where his great love, praise God, and write the length of God's love, amen. Then walk around to the opposite side, to the right hand, in the everlasting hand, the hand that cradled the universe, the hand that was dipped into the sea of eternity to form the world. The hand that blessed the little children. The hand that lifted up the woman taken in adultery. The hand that rebuked the winds and the waves. Hallelujah. And write the breath of God's love. I'm saying all you gotta do is go to Calvary. 
there you can see the evidence of God's love. Amen. The best expression example of God's love is the cross where Jesus died for our sins. There at the cross, Jesus died for every sinner paid the price for every vile sin imaginable. There's the proof of God's love, the evidence of God's love, and we see the love of God demonstrated at the cross. Amen. But not only do we see the declaration of his love, but I want you to notice the continuation of the love of God. I'm glad there can be no separation from his love. Amen. Amen. You cannot be separated from his love. Romans 8.35, the question is asked, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who can separate me from the love of Christ? Who can separate you from the love of Christ? Well, the answer is given in verse 38 and 39. He said, I'm persuaded that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, amen. What God has saved us this morning is uh, there is nothing around us, amen, uh, that can separate us from his love. There's nothing below us, uh, thank God. There's nothing behind us. Uh, there's nothing before us that can separate us from the love of God. There is nothing that we can experience uh, or encounter uh, that can separate us from the love of God. Uh, there is no fear or fate that can separate us from the love of God. I'm glad God's love is secure and settled forever, amen. And you and I that are saved, I'm glad we're safe and secure. Thank God in his amazing love and his grace and his mercy. I'm glad we're fixed, amen, until the day of redemption when he shall come and redeem the purchased possessions and carry us home to be with him, amen. Oh, God's love doesn't depend on anything or anybody. Hey, can I break your bubble this morning? It don't even depend on you. He loves us. Amen, he loves us. And then there can be no cessation of his love. Matter of fact, the Bible says in Jeremiah 31, 3, yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Amen. Since God is an everlasting God, I believe he has an everlasting love. And his everlasting love gives those that are saved everlasting life. Amen. So everything we got is everlasting. <laughs> Amen. Everything you buy nowadays in this world has always got a warranty. If you look at it, it'll say limited lifetime warranty. So if it's a lifetime warranty, does that mean it should be for a lifetime? But they clear themselves by putting limited on the front of it. Yeah, it might not make it your life, <laughs> amen. But I'm glad what we have in the Lord Jesus Christ is everlasting, amen. It is guaranteed by an everlasting God that has an everlasting love and has given us everlasting life, amen. Oh, listen, but then there's the contemplation of his love. Verse number 21 of the book of Jude, the Bible says, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. The Bible says we are told here to keep ourselves in the love of God. Does that mean that I have to live a certain way or do a certain thing to keep God loving me? Oh, considering what we have already seen, I don't believe that be the case. Hey, did you know God loved you before you were saved? Amen. So surely he can love you now, say amen. amen. I mean, he loved us when we were yet in our sins. Christ died for us, amen. amen. Oh, listen, the Bible is saying to us there in the book of Jude, he tells us to keep ourselves in the love of God. In other words, that word keep means to watch and guard from injury or loss by properly keeping an eye upon it. We are to guard our heart and life lest the fact of God's love is no longer a force in our life. 
In other words, don't forget why you are what you are and because of who you are. Amen. Amen. You and I this morning are because of his love. We are saved. Thank God we're his children because he loved us, amen? And that's what he's trying to tell us. Don't ever get over the fact of how much he loved you and all that he's done in your life, amen? God loves you. God loves you, amen? I'm to constantly think about his love for me. Well, I'm glad this morning when I woke up, God still loved me. I didn't have to get up and check if he still loved me. He already loved me. Amen. I mean, I, I'm glad this morning. I, and I, I need to think about what he has done for me constantly. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, the greatest thing ever happened to me happened that night that he saved me by his grace. And the only reason he saved me was because he loved me. Amen. And he saved me by his grace. Amen. Why are we to spend so much time thinking about the love of God? Well, I believe we should because we need to keep an awareness of his love, amen? We're to think constantly about God's love so that we'll never forget, never forget that he loves us. All of us in this church today, we know that life is not always easy. All of us have experienced hard times, amen? We can find ourselves facing dark times, but it is a great comfort to know that he loves us even in the midst of the darkness. Amen. George Mueller, they said for many years, kept a motto on his desk that read, it matters to him about you. <laughs> That's good. It matters to him about you. In other words, every day you matter to him. Every moment of every day you matter to him. Amen. Oh, thank God, don't ever forget it. And then we need to not only keep an awareness of his love, but we need to keep an appreciation for God's love. This morning, I'm glad that I know why I'm saved. I'm not saved because of the kind of life I have lived. I'm not saved because of all the things that I may have done. But I'm saved because God loved me enough that he gave himself for me and drew me unto himself and saved me by his marvelous grace. The love of God. Can we ever really fully comprehend the great love of God? We should keep ourselves in the love of God because the Lord, he chose to give his life that we all could live. The greatest act of love this world has ever known was displayed at Calvary. And his love needs to be appreciated by every one of us and never forgotten. We would not be saved this morning if it wasn't for the love of God. I was thinking, God began to speak to my heart this morning. I got to think about the God's love and his great mercy. But isn't it sad that there are people that will not accept the love of God? It's amazing to me when people that won't accept help when they need help. When people are there to offer help and have the means whereby to help, when they could be helped and they refuse it. Even more is how people that are lost, knowing what this Bible says, that if we die without Jesus Christ, we're going to hell. But yet God has done everything to save every individual that will trust Jesus Christ. I got to thinking about if we could, if we could interview people this morning in hell, if we could bring up a couple of people and talk to them and, and interview them and just say, hey, well, I'd like to find out about why did you end up in hell? Wonder what kind of excuses they would give us. I thought about a few and I just wanna briefly share this. I thought about the rich young ruler. You remember him? He came up to the Lord and he said, Lord, master, he said, master, what good thing must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus said, sell everything you've got, give it to the poor and follow me. You know what the Bible says he did? He went away sorrowful. 
because he had great riches. This morning, as far as we know, we never read in the Bible where he ever came back to the Lord. And as far as we know, that rich young ruler died and went to hell. And if we could bring him out this morning and say, could you please uh, tell me? I believe the first thing you would say is, I made the worst mistake of my life. Amen. The day that I met the master and the master told me what I must do. But instead of following the master, I kept following my life and my worldly goods and I ended up in hell. I believe we could say, do you think it's worth it? He would say, absolutely not. It's not worth it. Oh, listen, can you imagine those that are in hell this morning because they refused the love of God? I thought about King Agrippa. Brother Rick was teaching about the Apostle Paul this morning. I thought about Agrippa. One day, Paul was brought before Agrippa and he allowed Paul to speak for himself. And Paul began to talk to them and tell the king, about what God had done in his life, how they had got saved, how they had met the Lord Jesus Christ and, and gave his testimony before King Agrippa. Here's the words that King Agrippa said. Almost thou persuadest me to be a Christian. If we could bring King Agrippa out of hell this morning, and he would say to us, I was almost there. I, I heard the way, I heard the truth. I knew that there was only one way. And I said, no, I'll call for you uh, when there's a more convenient season. But according to the scriptures, a convenient season never came. And Agrippa would tell us it's not worth going to hell by putting it off for a later date. I wonder how many people like King Agrippa, they were almost persuaded. They were almost persuaded. They almost stepped out of the aisle. They almost left the pews. They almost went to the altar. But instead of coming, they said, I believe I'll wait till next Sunday. Amen. And Brother Jack, before the next Sunday came, they were lifting their eyes in that place called hell. I thought about it. I thought, why? And you just say, preacher, why did he go to hell? Because he just refused the love of God. I think about Pilate. Pilate examined the Lord Jesus himself, questioned him. Finally, Pilate went out and the Bible says that he washed his hands and said, I'm through. I'm done. I, I, I'm, I'm through with this. Take you and do what you will with him. I believe Pilate's in hell right now. Boy, I wish he, I, I guarantee he wish he had just a little drop of that water. He washed his hands in that day to get rid of Jesus. Amen. This morning, if we brought him out of hell and we would say, uh, Pilate, what do you think? He said, oh, I, I knew there was something different about him. I, I knew there was something different, uh, but I listened to my wife. She said, have thou nothing to do uh, with that righteous man? His wife probably in hell too. Uh, and she'd already told him, don't you have nothing to do with that uh, uh, that righteous man. And so he said, I washed my hands uh, of the whole ordeal, uh, but I'm in hell because I refused the love of God. Amen. Amen. The love of God. I thought about several more, but I'll close with this one. Of course, we know the rich man Jesus described in hell. But then I think about the thief on the cross. We know that one thief said, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus made a promise to him. Verily I say unto thee, today shalt thou be with me in paradise. But the other thief continued to rail on him. There's no telling all the things that he may have said to the Son of God that day. He said one time, if you are the Christ, save yourself and us. Well, I can imagine the, the filth that may have come out of his mouth toward the Savior. But he died and went to hell from exactly the side of the Savior. Amen. He was within speaking distance of the Lord Jesus Christ. 
He could hear everything that was being said by the Lord. He heard the seven cries from Calvary. He heard all that the people said around him. He heard what the conversation between the other thief and the Lord. But yet he stood. He still ended in hell because he refused the love of God in his life. How many people this morning are in hell because they refused the love of God. And this morning, why, why would anybody, why would anyone go to hell when God has provided salvation free and clear? Hey Amen, it's a free gift. He paid the price himself. He gave his only begotten son. It's there for the taking. It's there for the asking. It's there for the receiving. And he, all he says is, I love you. And I want to save you. If you'll just come to me. Oh, the love of God. The love of God. Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. You know what happens? The Holy Ghost comes to our hearts when we were lost and convicts us of our sins, makes us realize for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I am a sinner. Yeah. Amen. And if I die in my sinful state without Jesus, I'll not go to heaven. But the Holy Ghost comes and reveals the love of God to us that we do not have to die lost. We do not have to go to hell, but Christ has paid the price. And all he says, the Holy Ghost comes and he gets a hold of that heart and he starts drawing you. That's what he does. Amen. He says, please come. Come on. Jesus loves you. Come on. And I mean, he's tugging at your heart. He said, come. All you got to do is get up and come to Jesus. All you got to do is get to Jesus. All you got to do is get to Calvary. And if you trust him and what he did for you, he'll save you because he loves you. Amen. Because he loves you. And you don't have to go to hell. Hey, I'm, I'm glad I'm saved for a lot of reasons. I'm, I'm telling you, I am glad I'm saved because I'm not going to hell. Amen. One of these days, we're going to sing that song. I'm not going to hell. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I, listen, I'm glad I'm going to heaven. <laughs> but I'm, saved, I, I'm glad I'm saved for a lot of other reasons too. But that's the main one right there. Amen. Amen. You say, you only got saved to stay out of hell? Well, that was one good reason I got saved. Anybody in their right mind wouldn't want to go to hell. But you don't have to this morning because God loves you. God loves you. And the love of God is shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Ghost. And when he starts drawing you, he gets a hold of that heart. He's not going to drag you down here, but he'll tug at your heart. And he'll, he'll, you'll have that feeling, I need to go. I need to get there. I need to go forward. I, I need to get to that altar. I need to get right with God. I need to get saved. Amen. Yeah. All because he loved you. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you today for the love of God. Thank you, Father, for your great love wherewith you loved us. What a love this morning. Father, I thank you for that love fills my heart today. Thank you, Father, for the Holy Ghost of God that came by my way one day, drew me to the Savior and said, I love you. All you've got to do is come to me. This morning, Father, I pray that God, during this invitation, you speak to hearts. Lord, if there's somebody in this building that's lost, that they'll step out when they feel that drawing of the Holy Ghost and get to this altar and be saved. Lord, someone been listening by radio, I'm glad they can bow where they are. Somebody been watching my Facebook, Lord, I'm glad they can get saved right where they are if they will just bow before you and trust you. Call for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. God bless your people. May we, Lord, this morning that have that blessed assurance that we are saved. May we rejoice in the love of God.
And then, Lord, may we be convicted that we're not sharing the love of God like we should with our loved ones and others. God, speak to our hearts this morning. And we'll thank you, we'll praise you for it in Jesus' name. While we stand, our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed this morning, no one's looking. They're going to sing a verse of invitation. God spoke to your heart, I invite you to come. God loves you. We love you. And God will save you if you'll come to Him. Would you come while they sing? Lately I've been looking back along life's winding road to the old familiar markers of the mercies I have known. I know it may sound simple, but sure it's more safe? than a cliche. Are you sure? Are you ready There's no it? other way to tell you than to Won't say. God's been good in my life. I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. And sure, I've had my share of hard times, but by my side, He's always stood. Oh, and through Times replaying, and I can see I've cried some bitter tears, but I felt his arms around me as I faced my darkest fears. I've had more gains than losses, and I've known more joy than hurt. As his grace rolled down upon me, I deserve God. God's Just been make good your way in my yeah. life. I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams as I go to sleep each night. And sure, I've had my share of hard times, but by my side, He's always stood. Oh, and through it all, God. If you left today in this from this building, can you say, preacher, I know that everything's well between me and the Lord. If today were my day to go home, I know heaven's my home. Can you say that for sure? If you can, I invite you to come. Please give your heart to Jesus. Church, church, people all around us need the Lord. They need to have the love of God told to them. They need to see the love of God in our lives. We need the help of God. We need revival. We need a burden for souls. We need a burden that will break our hearts, that we will cry and weep as we call their names before the throne, that they'll be saved. I want them to sing that last verse one more time. If you're here this morning, you need to pray, pray for family, pray for revival, pray for yourself, whatever the need is. Just mind the Lord this morning. We need, Times we need and I can see I've cried some bitter tears But I felt his arms around me As I faced my darkest fears I've had more gains than losses And I've known more joy than hurt As his grace fell down upon me Undeserved God's been good oh, yes. In my life I've been blessed beyond my wildest dreams As I go to sleep each night Sure I've had my share of hard times But by my side he's always stood Oh and through Oh, God's been good. Our Heavenly Father, 
Father, I just want to say thank you this morning. Father, thank you again for the love that you have bestowed upon us. Thank you, God, for loving someone like me, Lord. Thank you for dying for me. Thank you for saving me. Lord, I know it's all because you love me. I had nothing to bring but sin and shame and sorrow. I'm glad, God, you love me. You saw my need and you saved me. Oh, Lord, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Lord, for blessing me. Thank you. Bless your people, Father. Speak to our hearts, oh God. Lord, what's accomplished, we'll give you the glory for it. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Appreciate you being here this morning.